And item number 11, the Council submission on funding options for fire and emergency New Zealand. Uh, if I could get Andrew Duncan and Beth Sullivan to come to the table, please. Um, I will move the resolution to put it on the book. Do I have a seconder for that? Uh, Councillor Mulholland, and uh, in this case, I think it is um, more complicated, so I will ask you to speak to the, um, to the, uh, the paper and the recommendations. Uh, Andrew, I believe it's you. Good afternoon. The Department of Internal Affairs is consulting on options for funding fire and emergency New Zealand. This is just the first stage of the process. Currently, it's funded off your insurance bill. However, as a result, people who aren't insured or who are underinsured aren't paying what some might consider their fair share. So the DIA has put a few options out to get some initial feedback. That includes making an adjustment to the way in which they calculate your how much you pay off your insurance. The other is to get a charge based on property value, which could be included on our rates bill. So you get your rates bill and it'll have your fire levy on it as well. Now, it's quite practical for us to do that in a similar way in which it's practical for us to include perhaps a targeted rate by Kainga Aura, which we've submitted on on the, unit, on the urban development bill, and for an infrastructure levy like we do for Mildale, all quite practical. We've drafted a submission that doesn't support using property value. While we're comfortable with the those targeted rates I referred to, we're not sure, we don't see that putting this fire levy would yeah, be of much use to the council or Aucklanders in general. I don't think it would give much benefit, sorry. We do note that Fire and Emergency New Zealand provides extremely valuable services and does need a stable and certain funding source. Just not sure that property a property-based charge is the right way to do it. There are quite a few, we've identified quite a few issues in the submission, including that given working off property values, not really designed for this purpose. And of course, Auckland's got much higher property values due to the underlying land values in the rest of the country. And if you were using the property values in our rating database, of course, different parts of the country do revaluations at different times. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I think just refer uh, councillors to um, clause 24 of the submission or the report, and that sets out reasonably clearly um, what the arguments are for not endorsing this this change. But let's go to questions first, Councillor Hills. Uh, yes, it's just a rather minor issue, but there says in the climate impact statement there is no climate impact from the issues considered in the report. And technically not, but if this is, becomes an issue, uh, drier weather causes more fires, the levies might increase. But, yeah, I, I just would be at pains to imagine there is no climate impact of decisions being made because of pressure on funding. I, I, I think the, the, the reason that it hasn't got an impact, it, this is about how we fund it rather than what impact it might have on the uh, either mitigation or adaptation of climate change. Um, does that... And your... the report was only asking to make a submission at this point. Yep, thank you. Um, Councillor Newman, question? Yeah, I'm just wondering how the fire service would... Um, you know, the fire service just doesn't put out fires at properties. I mean, the fire service attends motor vehicle accidents and cuts people out of cars and all that sort of thing. And, and I'm just wondering also, too, about um, people who insure offshore. Um, it seems to me that they kind of, if they do that, they're sort of, and if we've got an insurance-based scheme, um, they end up being free, they freeload. I mean, I can see some real issues in this issue area because I can see a whole lot of people receiving the benefits of the um, fire emergency services provided, but in effect don't fund it. So what's the best model for capturing to ensure that those people who receive the most benefits actually pay their 
fair share. And that's certainly one of the questions that we hope would be explored in more detail in the next round of any consultation that the DIA does. They record 80,000 incidents that were attended. About 9,000 were structural vegetation fires, 9,000 motor vehicle injuries and 13,000 medical emergencies. So the, some of those statistics would suggest a, a case for general taxation funding which of course could be a land tax, but that's another issue, I think. <laughs> uh, we won't go down that track just now, thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Councillor Cooper. Thank you. Um, ACC comes out of our tax. We all pay a little bit in our, well, some of us pay more than others, and at the end of them, we, as councillors, we get a bill, but um, most people pay it in their PAYE. Has, um, is that something you might have suggested? Because it means, um, if you look at the unemployment rates, quite low, and even beneficiaries pay tax on their um, benefit. That means everybody benefits from the fire emergency services. They're, everybody pays a little bit, you know, just like we do with ACC. The DIA was con were considering the options and we've restricted ourselves to where we were comfortable making comment. So I, I hadn't explored that issue, although it's an interesting thought for, for, many, for many of these um, issues here. Thank you. Just a, a question. The, the old levy, it was 86% um, from insurance on property and 8% from motor vehicle insurance. Under the new proposal, what happens to motor vehicle insurance? I think they are proposing to continue that. Okay. Um, so they, it would either be through the insurance still or as part of your registration. Okay, that's fine. Okay, um, comments. Um, Maybe I'll just lead off with a comment. Um, I agree that there is a problem that people free ride if they don't have insurance. And they, there's another problem that if you have something like a, an earthquake and you don't have insurance, uh, people are still left in an impossible position where on humane grounds you've, you've got to help them out. But my two concerns are, one, doing it on property value means that because properties are more expensive in Auckland, Auckland's paying a much bigger share of it, uh, which has nothing to do with how how much work is created for the for the fire service. Um, secondly, um, we've already got two pieces of government legislation where we're required to collect through our rating system uh, for the government, and that's on the Kianga Ora legislation. And I'm just trying to remember what the other piece of legislation was. Uh, Infrastructure, the, funding and financing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and at the end of the day, people simply regard these things uh, as, well, it's collected by the council, it must be paid to the council, We, which is not true. We're simply the collecting agency. So I think there's a limit to how much we want to take on in collecting levies on behalf of a, a central government agency. And there's a, uh, I, I have concerns that it's not equitable because... Uh, Auckland will pay a lot more because the property value is worth more, but this is not about the insurable value of the property, it's about how much we pay um, for the services. And because the property is more expensive, you're not paying any for more for the services. So on those two grounds, I support the submission. Uh, are there any other comments? Uh, Deputy Mayor Cashmore. Yes, thank you, sir. Um, good submission. I think Linda's points, I thought in your submission is a fair and equitable one that could perhaps be um, brought up at some point in time. The fire service has been amalgamated between the professional urban fire services and the volunteer rural. And there's a huge number more rural than urban. They're really chronically underfunded. The underfunding issue has been resolved to a degree. Now they have to actually get a guaranteed funding source um, for the service nationwide to provide equitable service across the country. That has to come via a central government. Ways. One of the ways I would suggest could be done by, is by compulsory insurance, which have a whole bunch of other benefits, quite frankly, um, for car accidents, house fires, and so, so forth. But that's another question for the Crown to investigate going forward. But it's yes, good submission. Well done. Thank you very much. Uh, any further comments? If not, I'll put the resolutions. All those in. Sorry, did we move those at the beginning? We did, yeah. Uh, all those in favour, please.